thanks for joining us again. Thanks for all the feedback and comments. It's uh, been great hearing from you all. We're going to uh, cook up that uh, spurring that we, that we shot in our previous video. We want to try and encourage people to just try a little bit harder to experiment a little bit with the meat and to see what you can, what you can come up with. So Jared's come up with an idea for the spurring and uh, hopefully it's tasty. So right, what we're going to be doing is we've got these lovely goose breasts. Um, they're still on the bone as you can see. So when we were butchering them up, I left the bone on. It's going to give us a little bit of extra flavor. There's cartilage and stuff in there, which is always good. So I'm doing a sort of traditional Mexican beef style recipe. So with the, the pulled beef, you'd like to use oranges. I think the oranges and the citrus is going to work well with this meat. As you can see, it's a nice dark meat. So I think that the symmetry will work. Citrus and duck or goose always goes great. Uh, what we're going to also be doing is we're going to use some dried prunes. Um, I thought that would complement the, the citrus, the sweetness. I think it will work really, really well with this. I've made a dry spice. I've made this before, uh, but I will put the recipe and all of the spicing into the, the blog so you can get that. But when I start frying it, that flavor is going to come through. It's going to brown and then obviously it's going to give flavor to the sauce. Um, we've got some limes, we've got some whole garlic, and then we'll throw in some chopped celery. Right, so we're going to throw some spice on these guys. I'm going to pat it in nicely. Um, I don't want to go too heavy with the hand, but we do want to get a nice coating on this. So it's just a dry spice. The meat has been dried in the fridge, so it's it's going to adhere, but it's not too wet. Fresh celery out of my garden, and now I want to put in. It's probably about a, a quarter of a whole garlic that we're going to be putting in. So it's three cloves, but they're quite big cloves. So once we had finished butchering these birds and taking the, the breasts and the leg meat off, I then took the carcasses, I boiled, boiled them down for a couple of hours and this is now the retaining stock. So I thought we can incorporate it with this dish. It's going to add a little bit of juice to the dish and then that will become our sauce at the end. Um, I also want to squeeze some oranges and we're going to use the juice of two of these lovely oranges. Right, so the last thing I like to do is just add a bit of uh, orange zest into these sorts of dishes. So it just adds a bit of extra flavor. And that's it. Um, I just want to get some oil in here, just so that we can fry up these breasts a bit. Okay. As you can hear, these breasts are now starting to sizzle nicely. Um, so it's getting a nice bit of heat on it. Right, so you can see the, the meat is nice and brown. Right guys, so I've got the celery, the garlic and the orange zest here. I'm just going to put it all into this pot, mix it around. Okay, now for the prunes. Right, so next I'm going to put in the stock and the orange juice. So, you just want to get the liquid almost to the top of the breast. Right, so what we want to do is we're going to pressure cook this for 15 minutes on high pressure. Cool. Okay, so the next step I'm going to make some salsa. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a raw salsa. So it's basically just raw tomato, raw onion, finely diced, a little bit of lime, a little bit of coriander, and I might throw in some paprika. You can throw in some chilies, some jalapenos. Uh, I'm going to keep them on the side. We can put our own on as we go. The reason why we use raw onions for this is it adds a nice little sweetness to the, to the dish. Coriander, fresh coriander. <coughs> Rough chop, it doesn't have to be too fine. It can be quite a strong flavor profile, so if it's not something you, you like, just use less of or just leave it out. We're just going to finish it off with a sprinkle of paprika and a little bit of salt. The salsa is done. Okay. Keeping this simple, I want to go too strong on the flavors with this. So it's going to be some avo, a little bit of the paprika again, and some salt with a squeeze of lime. Coriander, I'm going to throw in some, some salt, a little bit of paprika, mash it all up, 
pretty much done. Oh, it smells so good. So yeah, as you can see, this meat is just super dark, which is why we're going for strong citrus flavors. And the acidity is going to work so well, but that's, that's what you're looking for, a nice soft meat that pulls apart. Right, so the next step is I put the sauce back onto saute, so I want to bring it back up to the boil. I'm then going to use a emulsion blender or a stick blender to just blend up all of the celery and everything that's in there. We're going to throw the meat back in, we're going to throw in a handful of chopped coriander, and then I'm going to throw in a couple of squares of nice dark chocolate. So it's effectively going to make like a mole sauce, which is going to be great with all of this. So the chocolate also helps to thicken the sauce a little bit, but if you smell now, you can smell that cocoa. I'm using a 70% dark chocolate, so you can really smell that now. You can see how that sauce just coats the meat. That's that. And then last but not least, if you do like a little bit of homemade pickle jalapeno. So this is a quick pickle. I can put the recipe up if you guys want. Just one or two just to add a bit of flavor. Or three. And to finish off, squeeze of lime. And that's it. Spurring tacos.